the Honorable Judge Zimmerman presiding. Please be seated. Come to order. All right, Jose DeCastro, 23CR01-30015. Good morning. Good morning. Chris Thorum on behalf of Mr. DeCastro. He's present with us. Nice to see you, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, Agnes Patel, for the State Department for 1164. All right, this is your motion. Yes, Your Honor. First of all, I've had a chance to watch the video of the trial. I watched Mr. DeCastro come into the courtroom in an extraordinarily disrespectful fashion was convicted, he, he is given six months in jail. One thing I know he's going to do today is for no other purpose, no matter what your uh, ruling is, he wants to say sorry. I've asked him if he'd say sorry to the court. I understand that you may see it as that he should have apologized to the marshal. I don't see the marshal in here that he did this with. One thing I would note for the court is that the issues that I saw seem to be significant constitutional issues. The court addressed it, but what I did notice is that this should have been really briefed beforehand on First Amendment issues, so the court could have had that. That's uh, no fault of, uh, I think it just should have been done beforehand. I also noticed that at time of sentencing, the state asked for a suspended sentence, but Mr. Castro just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, and I see reasonably agitated and irritated the court into causing uh, a sentence that is now six months. This man, from what I can tell, Your Honor, has no prior felony convictions whatsoever. I'm doing that upon information and belief. I haven't run the scope. I know the state could do that, but I don't see that he has any felony convictions. He's made his appearances, and I think the time in jail has been shocking to him. I, I know it has because I can tell the reaction of the calls every day and how, how difficult it is for him. I think he pushed this and has uh, is learning a very, very difficult lesson in life. Um, I would ask the court to consider, based upon his ties to the community, with sister here, nephew, he has a whole bunch of people who wanted to come to court, which I uh, suggested may be a very, you know, if it's, they're going to come here, be respectful and uh, mindful of what's already occurred in this court. But what I ask the court to do given his lack of any serious criminal history, his remorse for his behavior in this courtroom during that trial, and uh, the fact that the state at the time did not want jail time. I'd ask for an appeal bond, Your Honor, so that the issue can be, uh, these issues can be properly raised. And so with that, Your Honor, I asked for an OR. I would just say a reasonable bail. I, I would suggest that since he came to the trial, since he already has gotten a taste of what inappropriate behavior in a courtroom looks like and feels like, I would ask for a bail in the amount of ten or twenty thousand dollars, a, a appeal bond in the amount of ten or twenty thousand dollars. With that, Your Honor, I submit. Hey. Your Honor, may I respond orally? Typically, uh, pursuant to the Nevada Rules of Criminal Practice, the state has 10 days uh, to file an opposition, but this was placed on calendar very quickly, so I would ask for leave of the court to answer um, orally. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'm in receipt of Mr. Orham's uh, motion for bail or any alternative for his own recognizance release. Um, I would note that NRS 178.488 um, does make it discretionary upon this court whether he would allow bail pending appeal. Um, Mr. DeCastro, there has been a briefing schedule set before Judge Levitt in district court on the appeal, but it's not set to be heard until July. Um, it's discretionary, Your Honor, as with a lot of the bail settings in Nevada, it's discretionary. And the state will oppose this, uh, this court setting a bail at this point. Um, there seems to be this assumption that this court sends Mr. DeCastro to six months um, in the Clark County Detention Center just because of his conduct or his inappropriate conduct in court. I would venture to say that Your Honor presided over the uh, over the trial where you found guilt beyond a reasonable doubt for both the obstructing a police officer and resisting a police officer. You saw his conduct um, in, the, in the body worn camera uh, by the officer. And I would venture to say, and I would submit to the court, that the six month sentence that you imposed isn't simply for his behavior um, in court or his behavior to your marshals, but that it is an appropriate sentence 
um, placed upon the defendant by the court due to the charges and the evidence that you saw during trial. Um, there's also been this claim that Mr. Nino Castro has um, stayed trouble-free um, for most of his life. I would venture to say yes, he does not have felony convictions, he does not have gross misdemeanor convictions, but he does have pretty consistent contact with law enforcement. He does have a warrant out of Ohio for a trespass. And I understand that's a pinly misdemeanor, however, it is a warrant status. Um, and he has a pending case in Las Vegas Justice Court um, for the very same offenses um, um, that the court heard um, during the trial uh, here. Um, as to the claim that, you know, hey, there were issues before trial and there should have been First Amendment issues um, raised or briefed prior to, Your Honor, defense counsel was able to argue the First Amendment defense. Um, Your, Your Honor heard these arguments both during the trial and during closing arguments. Um, Mr. DeCastro, when he took the stand, raised them um, as a defense. But Your Honor held, after listening to all of the evidence and applying the law, <laughs> or found him guilty um, regardless. This was not a First Amendment issue. The state stands by that. This was simply the defendant breaking the law. And he was sentenced accordingly for his behavior. It was a conduct, it was a consequence, an appropriate sentence um, imposed uh, by the court to the defendant. And so we would oppose any kind of change um, uh, or any kind of bail setting or an OR at this point. This is not a pre-trial detention. This is not a pre-trial, as Valdez Jimenez was cited also um, in defense counsel's motion. Valdez Jimenez stands for pre-trial detention. Mr. DeCastro is no longer cloaked with the presumption of innocence. He has been found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt by your honor. And so at this point, I would ask um, that the six month uh, sentence that you impose stand and that he remain in custody. Mayor, I'd like to read yes, the interpreter, quit reading. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Hang on. Is there an interpreter over there? Yeah, speaking. Oh. oh I, I, I'm talking about the oh, interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Your Honor, the, the statute we cited is, uh, in fact, just discretionary to you to determine on appeal, pending appeal, whether uh, a bit of appeal bond can be issued. I, I hear the state. I, I recognize that you found guilty. I'm not trying to in any way argue that. On appeal, there are legitimate issues. The court can see that you know there are some First Amendment issues just from watching the video, things that a, a court could consider on appeal. And so that's the only uh, basis I'm, I'm bringing that up on. But given the fact that I think he really is contrite for, for what he's done. I disagree. Have you watched the videos that have been posted since he's been incarcerated? I have, I'm in a murder trial. Okay, so, uh, yeah. so I, I had a chance. So he's going to apologize to me in a minute, but that's not what he's saying on what he's publishing online in his phone calls from the jail. That's not what he's saying at all. And are you aware that he has a trial pending in Las Vegas Municipal Court? He has a case pending in Good Springs Justice Court where he continues to manufacture situations where he'll get arrested? Your Honor, I recognize that's what he was sort of doing for a living. And this is, um, I, he's now being incarcerated. I, and so what he's saying in the couple of weeks since he's been incarcerated, when he calls from the jail and publishes them on his website, is not what he's about to say to me. Okay? So he's going to apologize to me now, but that's not what he's doing publicly, okay? Yes, Your Honor. I, I, I hear that. I, I won't have him speak at this time. But I would still ask you to consider that there may be legitimate issues. I think there are for Judge Levitt to consider. And I think these are sort of issues of first impression. That was the other thing I saw, is that in the state of Nevada, I can't find any case law that specifically talks about this filming of police officers. I really, what I would say to the court is I recognize that it's obnoxious behavior. That's what it appears to be. Whether it's protected is another thing that I think higher courts need to look at. But I can see if the court has already made up the court's mind. Well, I, I want to be clear. I did not have a problem with him filming, and I said that when I sentenced him. That was not the issue. It was the safety issues that he created with his behavior. And I also did not sentence him because of his ridiculous behavior in court. Um, that wasn't why I sentenced him to jail. I sentenced him because I found him guilty beyond reasonable doubt, and I thought that was the appropriate sentence. 
I could have given him, given him 180 days on each count and ran it consecutive for a year in jail, but I didn't. Um, and his behavior was un in unacceptable in court, but that's not what I sentenced him for. I did not sentence him for his behavior in court. I sentenced him for his behavior for the two charges that he faced. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so your motion is denied. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.